Hi friends, this video is about the management of a white mature cataract but surprisingly in this particular case I had a lot of difficulty in trying to remove the inspissated cortex. I will also show you how you can release an iris prolapse that occurred during the later stage of the procedure. The case gets started with adequate staining of the anterior capsule. The anterior capsule was very tough so I made an initial puncture with the help of a 26 gauge cystotome and then I used the uterata forceps to complete the capsulorexis. Milky cortex that issued out was settled down with the help of methyl cellulose. You don't have to use a dispersive or cohesive viscoelastic because there's no positive intralenticular pressure in hypermature cataracts. So after the capsulorexis is successfully completed and the superficial cortex is washed off, I then launch into my FACO procedure and I'm using a power of just 40% in this case. As I'm beginning the FACO chop, I realized that there was a conjunctival ballooning that was starting and therefore I attend to this. I kind of nip it off at the bud because the conjunctival ballooning in later stages will produce a lot of problem in visibility and in performing the procedure. Let's get back to the direct FACO chop. The cataract is just turning hypermature. You can see the edge of the nucleus when you pull it towards the center and that's where I start the crack. The nucleus in this particular case is not very hard or leathery. In fact, it is quite chalky and with just a power of 40%, I'm able to easily break it down. The vacuum in this particular case is 300 millimeters of mercury. The bottle height is at 100 centimeters from the patient's eye. The cortex in this case had formed a sort of a inspissated girdle that was stuck in within the capsular bag and close to the equator and when I tried to remove this with irrigation and aspiration and I was working at a vacuum of close to 500 millimeters of mercury. However, I could not get a good purchase because the fluffy cloud-like cortex was simply breaking off and coming into the aspiration port and the thick inspissated girdle was stuck between the edge of the anterior capsule and the posterior capsule and was firmly plastered onto the equator. It simply refused to come. Just then I thought that let me introduce the intraocular lens because I didn't want to have a posterior capsular rent while I was digging in the periphery to get the cortex out. Under the scaffold of the intraocular lens, I then create a small pivot rotation of the lens. The haptic of the lens sweeps through the equator. In so doing, it helps to dislodge the cortex. This I have done in the past. This pivot rotation maneuver, which can be done safely multiple times, has dislodged some cortex. However, I find that the girdle has not been dislodged, it's just some loose cortex that has come out. The girdle is still there and after all these efforts, I find that I still haven't removed it. And attempting to remove it, I actually inadvertently catch the anterior capsule. I then decided that I will dial this lens to about 180 degrees. I thought it will loosen the girdle a bit and again I tried the pivot rotation. And to my great surprise, I found that this maneuver paid off and the entire girdle got dislodged. So that's it. That's the entire cortical girdle that was stuck to the equator and was trapped between the peripheral part of the anterior capsule and the posterior capsule. And it got completely dislodged when I swept the haptic underneath it and then pivot rotated it. And I could remove the whole complex easily. 
I do not know if there's any other way in which this cortical girdle can be removed and therefore I think it's a useful technique for you to learn because it's quite safe and does not create any stress onto the sonules. When I take the coaxial IA out, I find that there is iris incarceration. In order to settle this, see what I am doing. I am first letting out some balance salt solution from the side port incision, making the eye hypotenuse. and gently tapping over the main incision. This is enough to cause the iris to settle. So remember that do not try to push the iris back. Make the eye hypotenuse so that the pressure inside the eye becomes low and then the iris will fall back on its own. I hope these few lessons will help you in your future management of such a similar case. Thank you for your attention.